Hi everyone. Can everyone listen to me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Who was that? What? Oh, okay. Okay, good. Susana and Doris are typing. You can remember that. Uh, recuerden para los hispanos que también pueden escribir en español. Hola, Susana. Hola Rosa, mucho gusto. Uh, everyone, for the English speakers, you can type down in English. Y para los hispanos pueden escribir sus dudas en español. El webinario y las dudas de los participantes serán respondidas en los cuatro idiomas. The webinar and all the participants' questions will be answered in the four languages of the, of, of the calle. So feel free to express in any, any language you want. Okay, good. I uh, good. So and you can type down and so that's good. Okay, we are already at the Calle Secretariat and at the UCAM. Estamos todos listos en la Secretaría Ejecutiva del Calle y de la UCAM. Eh, cedo la palabra al director, eje, eh, al secretario ejecutivo del Congreso de las Américas sobre la educación internacional. I give the word to the executive director of the Conference of the Americas on, on International Education. Hi, David. Hi, Mariana. Bonjour tout le monde. Muy buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. It's a real pleasure for me to launch this first series of, of webinar and to actually launch all the activities related to this year's conference. Um, I, I'll just mention in other languages the, the way we will proceed uh, just a little bit I, like explained Mariana. Entonces, eh, como lo explicaba Mariana, eh, estamos operando en los cuatro idiomas oficiales del continente. Para mí es un honor poder ahora lanzar la primera actividad y la primera, el primer webinar de esta serie. Y eh, vamos a proceder eh, en inglés para el día de hoy, pero tendrán el soporte visual en español. Eh, boa tarde a todos. Eh, si tenemos participantes de Brasil, eh, es un honor para mí poder comenzar hoy a hacer los webinarios eh, de calle y todas esas actividades. Vamos a proceder hoy en inglés, pero tenemos el soporte visual en inglés y español. Entonces, Esperamos que los colegas lusófonos puedan leer nuestros otros idiomas. Y finalmente, bonjour tout le monde en francés. Eh, je suis très heureux depuis le secrétariat de l'OI et du CAI d'initier cette première activité de webinaire en ligne qui lance, nos, eh, qui lance tous les pourparlers là, autour de la conférence. Alors, comme je disais dans les autres langues, eh, on va procéder en anglais pour aujourd'hui et avec le support visuel en anglais et en espagnol. Donc, eh, Uh, évidemment, on vous demandera de suivre là, sur les, euh, les PowerPoint qui seront à, à votre disposition. Et je remercie Et Mariana, tu, tu peux peut-être mettre le PowerPoint pour commencer, s'il vous plaît. Good. OK, so um, we'll start with the, um, the, the presentation. And again, I'll give a quick intro. And I will then give the mic back to my two colleagues. Uh, we have uh, Francis Brown from UCAM, one of the hosting universities of CAE this year. And we also have Luis Kawachi here at the Secretariat, who is our academic coordinator for the conference. Uh, so thanks, gents, for joining me. And uh, I'll start uh, right now. So um, why CAE, actually? Uh, those of you might know that CAE started in, in 2010. And uh, there were different conferences uh, all over the planet, uh, NAFSA, of course, being one of them on higher ed and recruitment. Uh, Asia Pacific, APAI, had their own conference back in Asia and in the Pacific. The uh, EAIE had their own conference in Europe every year. But there was no such thing as a major conference uh, that was uniting all the continent, all the Americas together. So. Although we were different organizations with similar conferences, CONAHEC, CBIE, and OE, IOHE, 
actually we were all supported by Global Affairs Canada and Education Canada doing our own uh, organizational conference but in 2010 these three founding CHI organizations said well let's try to do something together in order to get a larger attendance and that's how the first CHI was born back in 2010 and since then I think the, the experience has been uh, quite successful. There were other uh, conferences such as Ampai, Faubai, in all countries national initiatives were taken but I think uh, since 2010 in, in its four first editions CHI managed to actually become the, the, the one single reference for uh, having an all-American, all inter american uh, conference. So um, you've seen that the previous editions, we started in Calgary in 2010, followed by Rio de Janeiro 2012, Mexico in Monterrey 2013, and Ecuador uh, just a year and a half or two years ago. Uh, and, and we're excited about bringing CHI to Montreal for, ne for this year. And basically, the conference is, is a broad inter-American forum for, for debates and dialogue we are putting on the table high-level um, and, and, and relevant uh, items in order to see how can decision makers first make a diagnosis of what are the current trends and challenges but also reflect together on how can we tackle these challenges and actually create and build an agenda that actually serves the universities and the colleges in order to push that forward and implement different kind of initiatives. initiatives. So. Um, Whoa. So who takes part to this, uh, to this conference? Of course, the main audience, and most of you, I, I just saw the list of those who registered today for the conference, are coming from the, the universities. And that's, of course, the key focus. But it's also a combination. We want this conference to be actually uh, multilateral in the sense that we have people from the academia coming. but mostly from the uh, university and colleges we will have senior executive senior management and senior executives so uh, university presidents vps provost dean director of international um, but this is not the only target audience uh, we try to match this and we do have quite a, a success matching that with national government authorities would it be uh, some ministries of education, some national science funds uh, like the CONACYT, CENESIT, CONA and others, um, and also with uh, major multilateral organizations. Uh, you, last uh, CAI in Ecuador, we had the, uh, the OAS, Organization of American State, the OAE, which is uh, Estados Iberoamericanos, uh, UNESCO, uh, uh, IDB, World Bank, and, and even others. So this is that kind of three-layer uh, crowd that, that jumps in. And I think we've made an effort also for Montreal not only to have government and university colleges representative, but also have the, the, the private sector, uh, the industry, those who are on the workforce and, and the work field, in order to complete the famous triple helix uh, that, that we're all talking about and, and of course encouraging social, civil society to, to join this effort and uh, as a support for, uh, for these discussions. Just a couple of results. Um, we want to keep CAI, we don't want CAI to become a huge conference in the sense that I think we're doing good with six to eight hundred participants in order to make sure that those who are coming have a chance to network, have a chance to connect. So basically we had a bit more than 3,600 participants on four editions and, and the target for Montreal is roughly the same. Interestingly enough, in terms of countries, I don't know if you can see my, my mouse on the screen, uh, but uh, 53 countries. There's 35 countries in the Americas. It means that CHI really has become, a, I always say that, that but a one-stop shop. It means that Europeans know that they won't do, uh, okay, no, you, you can't see my mouse. There must be an option, I guess, this, for example. Um, here, 53 countries. Um, so it means that even if we're 35 countries in the, in the continent, uh, other regions have identified CHI now as the reference to meet with many countries at the same time. So there's no way a single organization can 
traveled to Canada, US, Mexico, Argentina, Chile, Brazil in the same year. However, they have identified CAE as that one-stop shop conference where they can actually meet with strategic partners. As I was saying, both from governments and universities. So uh, that, that's quite exciting for us. And that's why when you saw the to total profile of, of, of institutions that have come, yeah, we're above a thousand different institutions represented. Another um, key element is this one. Uh, as you can see, we're basically 50-50 in terms of gender. Um, so uh, our Emulies network, our common space for women leaders in higher education institutions, have been successful in dragging uh, women leaders to the conference. So I think this is one of the very few conferences that can actually uh, demonstrate almost a 50-50% distribution. And again, for this year, this year's edition, um, we intend to have a Emulies uh, plenary session. On, on, on that, matching two different ministers with two different rectoras or two different university presidents, one from Canada and one from Latin America in, in both cases. So this is pretty exciting as well. Um, and I, as the, the table shows, I mean, we do have a series of uh, ongoing events that go beyond the conference, webinar, network activities that are all leading up to the conference in order to make sure that people will actually uh, take out the maximum uh, of what they can do at, at, the, at the conference. Those who are interested in linking up with specific countries, you would find uh, here the table with uh, percentages of, of countries that are represented. As you can see, previous hosting countries have a major, um, a major participation, which is the case for particularly Mexico and Canada that were hosted. Brazil and Ecuador were other hosts, so it's, it shows that Canada and Mexico have been active in other conferences as well. The US, Colombia, Argentina, so 5%. So when you take 35 countries in the continent and you split them, I think having 4 and 5% of, of all participation is al already significant because it's a large number of countries participating. But of course, we expect uh, those of you who joined from different areas today, uh, you know that some countries are facing different challenges and issues in terms of, of their policies related to immigration and higher education. So we're confident that, uh, I mean, this year it, it is a, an opportunity for the Canadian institutions that are not only part of the hosting committee, which are our five universities that I'll let Francis uh, present, but I think that the response with all Canadian universities will be strong. We actually uh, just last week consolidated our partnership with Universities Canada who will be associated with the conference and they will make sure that they offer this kind of a op unique opportunity to meet with all Canadian institutions uh, one more time. So voila. Um, this is the plan for this year. You all know the dates. Uh, so the conference will be about preparing the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. Research and Higher Education Bridges to Prosperity in the Amer across the Americas, and it will be co-hosted by UCAM, Concordia, McGill, Université de Montréal, and École de Technologie Supérieure. So a great deal for us, and many of you have seen last week uh, that the QS survey was out and that Montreal is actually world's number one student city, so it's actually good promo for us, cheap and <laughs> very good promo for us. We're excited about that. So. For those who never had the chance to visit Montreal, uh, I'm sure that it, it, it's a unique opportunity. So we, we will be ready to welcome you all. I just want to complete quickly explaining what is the CAE structure. Because although, as you can see on, on this slide here, uh, our IOHE is acting as executive secretariat for the conference, as I mentioned earlier, it's three founding organizations, CONAHEG, the CBIE, and uh, IOHC were greatly supported by EduCanada. Uh, and, and I'll let Francis uh, explain a bit later who are the uh, national hosts for, for this year's uh, edition. But CAIE is more than that. Uh, is, it's much more than that, actually. The way it is structured is that here in the Secretariat, we will coordinate the work through a steering committee. So, so the steering committee is actually the permanent and highest level of uh, authority, if you allow the expression, or decision uh, for, for the conference. Um, and I'll, I'll explain who's part of that. For each CAI edition, there's a national committee that is being established. And that's why Francis is here today to represent this committee. 
However, I mean, it would be uh, too much responsibility for such a small group of people to, to make all decisions. So that's why two different uh, committees were created, an advisory and an academic committee. So these committees are created for a two-year term before each conference, and they will actually assist us uh, in, in setting up the, uh, the themes, discussing uh, trends, challenges, how to, how to address it. Uh, suggest speakers, and ensure that there's a commitment uh, from the entire committee. And as you will see, th we create these committees throughout a huge network of 34 associate members, which is the richness of this conference. It means that it's not uh, IOHE driving that alone. We actually have 34 associated members. So um, for now, the steering committee, the steering committee it, 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 it comprises five uh, different organizations, which are uh, normally it's the three founding organizations. Um, sorry, the three founding organizations, which are right here: CBIE, Conahec, and IOHE. Um, and then we add the two X CAI. So uh, Ecuador here is CAI 2015 with Yachay as representative. And uh, Mexico is CAI 2013. So we have uh, the national host at, at the global level, which was Ampey and Universidad Autónoma de Nuevo León, uh, who's, who's uh, sitting on the committee. As observers, we have Global Affairs as our main sponsor. And of course, the national committee will always have a seat on the steering committee to ensure that we're in line with of course, what's coming in, in the pipeline for the, the next conference. So in that sense, uh, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it, this is our, our leading structure. Currently, uh, our advisory committee is, how am I erasing, sorry. Um, our committee, advisory committee uh, is, our, is composed by ADRU, Dominican Republic, El Cin, Argentina, Cruz, Chile, Faubai Brasil, uh, La Fédération des Cégep here in Quebec, Las Pau Harvard in the USA, and Unica uh, in Jamaica for the entire Caribbean. And then in terms of our academic committee, we have Darla Dirdov at AIEA. I just came back from Washington actually for that conference. It, it was a, a good opportunity to network with many of our associated members. Uh, Anouyes. Uh, in Mexico, ASCUN, Colombia, LBCCIE uh, back in Vancouver, uh, British Columbia, El Cladea in Peru, CONARE, Costa Rica, and El IIE in uh, both Washington and DC and with many offices in, in the US. Um, and then, uh, as I mentioned, the National Committee, I think for us it was a major hit to, to actually work with the five uh, institutions that are in the city. Uh, UCAM is taking the leadership in terms of coordination efforts, uh, but all five universities are truly committed with, with the conference, uh, which are, uh, uh, the other ones are McGill University, Concordia, Université de Montréal, uh, and ETS, which stands for uh, École de Tec Technologie Supérieure, or High Technology School, Escuela de Tecnología Superior. All right. And just to conclude, uh, I just want to give you a broad overview. I mean, there was a table earlier with all 34 members. But just for those of you who are looking at possible partners or have target countries in mind in terms of who do you want to develop business with or, or cooperation with, here are uh, country by country the list of our associated me members. Basically, each country with a national uh, university association is a partner plus others that are uh, that have similar missions. So basically, that gives a strength to the CAI structure in the sense that not only if we take Argentina, which is on the screen, if you want to do with Universidad de Nacional del Nordeste, that's fine. But not only you can deal with them bilaterally, but you know that the national board will be there, so it gives you opportunity to link up with many more. So Argentina, SIN, uh, and Rel Arias. In Bolivia, El CEUB. In Brazil, we have El Crub y Faubai. In Canada, uh, BCCIE, uh, CBIE, Fédération des Cégep, and Universities Canada. In Chile, El Cruz, Consejo de Rectores de Universidad Chilenas. And in two weeks' time, I can tell you that El CUES, Consejo de Universidades, de Universidades Estaduales de Chile, uh, will also join. 
uh, Colombia as Kun, and we're also waiting for the Colombians to be back full time at, uh, to uh, discuss with CCYK uh, in order for them to join uh, Challenge Your Knowledge Colombia. Uh, in Costa Rica, El Conarre. In Dominican Republic, ADRU, again the national uh, rectores. Uh, Yachai, who was hosting the previous CAI, uh, um, and I hope that the soon to be established National University Network, which is a result of the CAI 2015, will, as soon as they set up their, their jurisdiction, will become an associated member. In Guatemala, well, based in Guatemala, but for the entire Central America, it's SUCA. Then for the, uh, Ingl the Caribbean, UNICA, based in Kingston. In Mexico, a long ally, a long time ally, Ampey, Anuyes, Anut, which are the technical un universities, and FIMPES, uh, also host, uh, co host for, for 2013 uh, in Monterrey, uh, Ampey. In Panama, we have uh, the Consejo de Rectores de Panama, CRP. In Peru, ASUP, which is the national board, and CLADEA, that's an example of an inter-American inter network but focused on a faculty approach, so th this is uh, business schools. Um, Puerto Rico is there with Campus Puerto Rico. In the US, we have LASPAO, which is in Harvard, the Latin American uh, network, AIEA, uh, based in, uh, well, operating from, from uh, not Duke, but um, I have a blank there, uh, CCID and uh, IIE, the Institute of International Education. In Uruguay, which is also a, a wider coverage, but it's AUGM, uh, Asociación de Universidades, Grupo Montevideo, which is a regional network as well, but based in Montevideo. And Five different organizations that have a wider coverage. So AUF, Agence Universitaire Francophonie, uh, pour les for the French-speaking uh, French university network. CONAHEC, which is North American Consortium. Uh, Europeans are there with the Grupo de Universidades Iberoamericanas La Rabida. We are here, uh, OUI, IOHE, and also UDUAL, which is based in UNAM, Mexico, which groups all Latin American universities. Um, that one we saw already. And here are the five rectores, les rectors, or the university presidents, that are actually part of, officially representatives for these institutions. So, voila for me. Uh, I'll uh, pass the mic to Francis Brown, who is from uh, l'Université du Québec à Montréal, UCAM, as, as you saw, one of the five uh, hosting institutions, uh, but speaking here on the coordination part from UCAM. So, Francis, the mic is yours, my friend. Hi. Thank you very much, David. Um, bonjour à tout le monde. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm really glad to be here on this inaugural webinar uh, for the Conference of the Americas on International Education. So, my name is Francis Brown. I'm the executive coordinator uh, for the National Committee which is conformed by those five universities you see there, Université du Québec à Montréal, McGill University, Concordia University, Université de Montréal, and uh, École de Technologie Supérieure. Um, basically, um, just to give you an image about the force of the, these five universities, which all took part in previous editions of the conference, um, either in Rio, in Calgary, or uh, Monterey, or Quito, um, these five universities group were more or less 200,000 students um, in their institution, so it's a great academic force in the Americas. And um, you see now the five university presidents, which are at the origin of this um, candidacy to attract the conference uh, in Montreal. Since all five universities took part in the previous editions, they decided, uh, the university presidents, to uh, join their forces and to welcome, this time, to welcome the Americas um, strictly in Montreal. And the force of being together is that we have different kind of universities, which are the national committee. Uh, some are uh, comprehensive universities, some are uh, generalist uh, universities, and um, as for example, the École de Technologie Supérieure is specifically an engineering school. Um, so now it, it, it's about the, um, the, um, the, the, the reason why uh, we decided to attract this event here and to welcome you. 
And now it's a little bit like to present Montreal. David uh, presented a few elements of that. We had the great news uh, last week that Montreal was named the world best city to study according to the QS uh, Best Student Cities 2017. So Paris was number one. We were number five and within one year we got the top spot. So we're quite, quite enthusiastic about it. And uh, as I said, in Montreal we have uh, per capita, we have more or less the same number of students as Boston um, with around 200,000 uh, university students from which we have more than 6,000 at the doctoral level. And every year, either on uh, study abroad exchanges or short stay for research or for a whole degree, we have around 25,000 international students that are here. So it's a major destination uh, for international collaboration and education. And um, needless to say that uh, McGill uh, is a well-renowned university uh, among top 30 and University of Montréal uh, close top uh, 100. And we're number one city in Canada in terms of uh, research activities. It'll be publicly funded or funded through collaboration uh, with the, the, the governments or uh, the private sector. So this is why university is quite a good destination and this kind of dynamics that we have around education. Uh, here. So why did we decide to join our forces and to welcome the Americas in October? Um, first of all is that every year all five universities go and see their partners abroad in the Americas uh, in different events, uh, among them the Conference of the Americas. So now it's a good year actually to welcome people this time to Montreal and to have them visit our university and um, discuss about the management of internationalization in our city. And as I said, well, we want to still position Montreal and Canada as an international knowledge center, um, promote our institutional offer in terms of collaboration, research, and training. We have a lot of collaborations um, with Latin American institutions, U.S. institutions as well, but we want to deepen these collaborations and we want to uh, see where our partners, uh, what is our best practices, what is the best practices of our other partners, and what are people doing abroad in the Americas in terms of internationalization. And finally, we want to favor new linkages between institution, uh, research funding agencies, and partners from the private sector, which is one of the uh, kind of participants that we're looking forward to in the conference this year. Um, we have numerous technological parks, a lot of industrial clusters, um, and a lot of models. We have the District of Innovation, which uh, our universities universities are taking part in with the private sector um, to favor innovation uh, at the regional level. So we want them on board for the conference and we, um, we want to see how we can favor new linkages in that, um, in that sense. So now is a little bit the, the image that you will get on October 11 in Montreal in the, um, the opening ceremony of uh, the Conference of the Americas. Um, a quick word on the venue, this is a little bit the, the sales pitch um, about the conference. So we will be at the Palais des Congrès uh, de Montréal, which is our biggest conference center uh, here in Montreal. Um, it's right downtown, it's a great area, it's just close to the old part of the city, it's close to the, um, it's within the international district and close to the, 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 the business district as well, so really a top location in the city. And uh, we have the main hotel, five-star hotel, which are giving us great rates for the conference, the Intercontinental, which is right across the street. And we have other accommodation options nearby which, within uh, walking distance. And for those who would be uh, asking themselves, well, in Montreal, you have snow in October. Well, two things. Um, first, we don't have snow in October, so we'll be fine. But if ever we have some, the Palais des Congrès, the venue, and the main hotel are connected to the world largest underground city. So we have around 33 kilometers of shops, businesses, tunnels that are interconnecting with the subway, with hotels, with uh, different activities uh, that are going, in, uh, going on in Montreal. And this year we have, uh, what is interesting is that we will have an array of cultural activities and festivals since that um, Montreal is celebrating its 375th anniversary this year. Um, so there's uh, plenty of things that would be more on the historical side or the cultural side 
uh, organized in Montreal, but throughout the year, not only in summer. And with regards to mobility, um, the airport is 20 minutes away by bus or taxi, so quite uh, easy to get there. And we have easy connections um, with many countries, direct flights to Mexico, um, to Cuba, to USA, other Canadian cities. Uh, for example, a direct flight uh, with Copa to Panama and uh, effective connecting flights to other uh, countries, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Argentina. So it's really a tough um, situation to have uh, the conference now uh, this year in Montreal. As for the setting now, um, we'll talk about the program a little bit later on uh, with Luis. Um, but the one thing we want you to remember is that uh, since we'll be in this great conference center, all the activities will be on the same level. So the plenary sessions and networking will be held in this orange room that you can see on, on the map, uh, which will have simultaneous translation in four languages of the Americas. So English, French, Spanish, and Portuguese. And the uh, pink and green sections are for the exhibition and meeting spaces and uh, lunch and coffee breaks. So this will be an open space uh, where we can meet uh, your partners. And all the yellow rooms will be for the workshops and conference sessions. Some workshops will also benefit from the uh, translation to, from English to Spanish and uh, Spanish to English. So this is a little bit the setting in which we are working in to welcome you well and make this event successful, this fifth edition of the conference. And how to really benefit from it? Well, first of all, register. Um, I think uh, it would be valuable to benefit from the early bird fee until June 15 and participate in the CAI webinar series. Not only this one, but the other ones that are starting on March 28, some of which are offered by OST universities as well during the year. And um, finally, have your say and share your best practices. There's a call for proposals open until April 7 on different thematics of the conference. And finally, well, promote and network through uh, the exhibition. And there's many stands available to meet and greet the partners. Um, there will be a lot of uh, network uh, spaces, either in the program, but elsewhere also, uh, where you can meet uh, and establish new collaborations. So basically, these are the four, this is the setting for the conference this year. And these are the four ways that you can consider in benefiting from the conference uh, this year uh, in Montreal. So thank you very much. I guess I'll lend the, um, the mic to Luis. Thank you very much, Francis. Uh, bonjour à tout le monde. Buenas tardes. Boa tarde. Um, me falta uno. Oh, yes. Hi, how are you doing, everyone? Um, English, the official language. Um, so speaking about the Conference of the Americas, I am uh, Luis Gawachi. I'm the academic coordinator for the program. And um, pretty much the, um, the, the one who will be talking to you about the, the thematic background of the Congress, what we're expecting to achieve, and where do we come from in terms of um, topic and, and theme behind it. Uh, so first of all, talking about the conference, um, as David mentioned, Francis mentioned, this is not a new conference. It has had a history. This is the fifth edition of the Congress. And so um, there is a body of work that has been done over the past 10 years uh, of which we wanted to um, capitalize and build upon. So broad consultations were carried out with members of the different committees, um, relevant stakeholders, people that are involved in the um, international education field, and to realize that we are called upon to open a conversation that uh, promotes synergies and a dialogue between academia and the government, civil society, uh, in order to bring about tangible impact to the betterment of our societies. And so based on these broad consultations, <clears throat> we achieve um, a, a series of guidelines as to where this Congress was supposed to go. And so uh, raising awareness, of course, of our national and regional diversities, um, our existing capacities, not only as communities, but as countries and as regions themselves, local priorities, regional priorities, the players, and what are the intended outcomes of each one of us in this diverse continent of ours. Um, that being said, um, then we reach the actual 
theme, main theme of the Congress, which is preparing the leaders and innovators of tomorrow, research and higher education, bridges to prosperity across the Americas. And this may seem as a very ambitious agenda, and uh, we could say that it is, but we are supported on our consultations, and we believe that these are relevant matters, particularly in, in um, given the times and the pressing matters at hand. So um, out of this main subject, or this main theme uh, that will run across the uh, three days of the conference, we um, find six main uh, or sub-themes, subjects that we will be addressing. Uh, the first one, which is developing knowledge and innovation ecosystems, uh, which touches upon the, the, the acknowledgement that higher education institutions do not exist in a vacuum, that they are, are called upon to promote a broad-based initiatives that advance our societies, that allow us to articulate environments with interdisciplinary uh, logic, cross-collaboration sector between industry and the academic sector with government policy support. Uh, the idea is to how best can we uh, develop um, intelligent, intelligent knowledge centers that can be prosperous and help our, uh, the, the general development of our societies. We also then touch upon the uh, subject of research, so relevant to a lot, most of our universities locally and throughout the continent as well, but not only from the basic research outside, but also from the applied research uh, perspective. And so the understanding that innovation should be understood as a continuum of scientific endeavor, scientific and academic endeavor, and the um, need that we have to bridge our capacities and experiences as countries across the continent to build upon each other and uh, propel innovation by the application of basic and applied research um, directly to our academic activities, but also to our societies. That's the second sub-theme of the conference. Uh, thirdly, higher education institutions, lifelong, lifelong learning and employability, and that uh, sub-theme um, folds from uh, the notion that a lot of our academic work as institutions is sometimes dedicated to the development of graduates uh, that respond to specific demands of industry-driven economies and industry sectors. Um, but what is, what is, therefore, the role that all of us as higher education institutions have in the development of human capital and the development of our own societies in the future? How do we articulate our academic activity to guarantee that our uh, graduates will be involved in a lifelong learning process that uh, will bring about um, a better outcome for our own societies? And so it's a, an interesting question that, that comes uh, particularly um, relevant today uh, with a notion of transferability of soft skills and job skills across borders, uh, mobility, etc. So it's, it's that's the, the the implications behind this sub-theme. Third, we're talking about innovative educational models, the development of lifelong competencies, the understanding that uh, knowledge acquisition is no longer sufficient for development of our own future professionals, and therefore the integration of soft skills uh, via through uh, nouvelle work activities in, in the workplace, uh, how to articulate the workplace and the academic place so that our graduates actually develop um, skills that they can transfer, as I said, abroad, and um, that can that can make them uh, change their own mindset and be more responsive to the uh, the speed of evolution in their own professional, academic, but also work environment. Uh, fifth, and something which we believed was very relevant to touch upon, is the matter of equity and inclusion, and how to create opportunity for human development through higher education. And so um, access to quality education across the continent is unevenly distributed. That is the premise behind this notion. And therefore, what are we going to do as the academic sector, as the government, the civil society, to guarantee that there is equity in access and that we can transfer the benefits of our academic activities across the board, regardless of gender, origin, ethnic background, linguistic differences, disabilities, and even traditional attitudes towards certain groups. And finally, uh, sixth sub-theme of the conference is the societal evolution and the adaptabilities of HEIs, the higher education institutions. And that touches specifically upon 
the speed and the rate of change that we have all uh, witnessed in the last years, and how have we been capable, nimble enough to adapt to the speed of change? How, uh, how, how committed have we been to uh, respond to economic trans transformations, to internal political changes, to external forces that seem to be distant before and suddenly they're immediately in our surrounding? Um, have we managed to facilitate an understanding between the academic, the governmental, the civil society sectors, private enterprise? And um, so how, how have we, as uh, academic sector, but also as government, facilitated these activities, civil society and their input and contributions? And so um, in general, this is the layout of uh, the conference. Uh, as I said, the main subject, the main theme, and the six sub-themes that will uh, cover all of our activities for the, for the three days. Um, I will move a little further down. How can we be a part of the, the CAIE, the Congress, the Conference of the Americas, or can you be a part of it? Um, Francis mentioned it before. I would like to um, em emphasize and expand a little more through the webinar series, which will obviously happen from today and up until basically the day of the, web of the conference. Uh, so this is all of the pre-conference activities, uh, a total of seven webinars, other than this one, which is a presentation one. The other ones are thematic uh, webinars that will touch upon each one of the six sub-themes of the conference. Some, as mentioned before, will be hosted, uh, presented, carried out by the uh, different universities of the National Committee. Their own presidents and uh, rectors will be involved in these activities. Um, accompanied by international experts from uh, different areas. And these are all meant to be conversation starters to prepare us definitely to, with, with a broader baggage of understanding and knowledge uh, towards the topics that will be addressed during the conference itself. And then, uh, during the conference, we have the parallel sessions. Uh, the call for proposals is currently open. The deadline for submission is April the 7th, so we invite everyone to come and visit the website to understand, uh, see what, what more can we understand about it and what can we propose or can you propose uh, to become, um, uh, to participate in a parallel session. So there's a total of 30 parallel sessions that will take place during the three days. Uh, we suggest that these uh, sessions are uh, put together by three presenters. Maybe if there's somebody else as a moderator, welcomed. Uh, so three presenters plus a moderator, perhaps, depending on the format that you choose. Uh, we would like to encourage uh, geographic diversity, language diversity, uh, cooperation, and uh, more than a gathering of uh, ex exposing only experiences, we'd rather see uh, what have been the challenges that we have been faced with in order to succeed in our project? What have been the advantages of the environment that we find ourselves in the promotion of our knowledge ecosystem, for example? How have this reality favors the, the inclusion of uh, minorities or uh, cultural groups in our academic endeavor and what can be contrasted to other places? That seems to be uh, what we're being called upon to do, uh, move beyond the uh, traditional exposition to actually engage in a, um, in a dialogue that may be fruitful and may be transferable to other areas of the continent. So uh, to emphasize the, the logic behind the website, we invite you to visit uh, the website. As I said, as you see, this is the main cover page of it. You will find information about who we are, um, general information about the Congress, Obviously, the registration section, which we encourage you, like Francis just did, to take advantage of the early bird fee, which is a good thing for everyone. If you would like to know more about uh, the themes, the sub-themes, the descriptions, the uh, formats that are expected, or submit a parallel session, which we strongly encourage you to do, please don't hesitate to consult uh, the top section um, dedicated to that. Next to it, you will find the webinars section with the description of all upcoming seven webinars, their subjects, the speakers, the dates, the format to uh, register to that. And finally, on the main page, easy to do, there's a couple of buttons that will direct you to these two uh, sections, the registration and the parallel sessions session, uh, section. 
to uh, facilitate then the consultation in terms that you have any questions. But uh, we are still around for a little while. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to address them to us in any language. And we will try our best to answer them. Um, please, um, I'll just allow them to, uh, for, the, for, the, for the questions to come about. Thank you. Okay. Um, Luis, tal vez una primera pregunta de Doris Ceballos. Eh, hay un tema que recoge políticas públicas de educación superior. ¿En cuál de los ejes del evento cabe esta temática? Eh, creo que tendremos que analizar qué aspecto de políticas públicas de educación superior para poder tratar de insertarla. Eh, para Doris, una, uno de los análisis o de los... Uh, should I reply in English, I guess? Yes. No, no, she, she, uh, she has to uh, answer in Spanish, please. Okay. We'll you can summarize in English afterwards. Okay, that's fine. Entonces, eh, uno de los, de los análisis que hicimos a través de la, de, del estudio y de la propuesta de cada una de esas subtemáticas era identificar a quién de nuestros públicos, de nuestros actores claves, toca cada una de estas subtemáticas. Y bueno, la, la parte de políticas públicas y la parte de gobierno toca en cualquiera de ellas. Entonces, eh, es, es inherente al, al gobierno y es inherente a la sociedad civil determinar eh, cómo mejor articular la estructura social, el entorno, para poder facilitar entonces la actividad académica. Creo que yo diría, eh, vamos, a, vamos a analizar exactamente cuál es la temática y vemos en dónde podemos insertarlo. Eh, para, en un mundo ideal quisiéramos ver en una mesa redonda en cada una de las sesiones paralelas a, a la mejor contrastar la postura de la institución educativa de la sociedad civil, inclusive del gobierno para la facilitación de estas políticas públicas que lleven a la consecución de un proyecto um, entonces tal vez sea pertinente analizar un poquito más al respecto, pero el espacio está abierto está abierto y, y, y será también completado por representantes de, de otros eh, sectores. Ya uh -huh. estamos, están confirmados por lo menos dos o tres min, eh, ministros o secretarios de educación. También tenemos discusiones con organismos multilaterales como la OEA y la UNESCO que recién aprobaron la Agenda Interamericana de Educación. Entonces todo el tema de las políticas públicas enfocada a calidad y acceso a, eh, a, y, a, y a otros ejes de trabajo que figuran de este, dentro de esta a, agenda, la idea es que ellos puedan venir a compartir un poco de qué se trata desde el punto de vista multilateral y luego que los gobiernos se pronuncian para que las universidades sepan cómo ellos pueden contribuir, que sea en la formación docente o que sea en, en, otros, este, en otros temas particulares. Uh, uh, yes, if you want to summarize, please. Um, um, the question was related to pub, 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 public policy um, regarding higher education and where, where would it fit in each one of the sub-themes. And the answer is that we expect it to fit in all of them. Uh, we are all restricted and constrained by public policy. Our act academic activity is higher education institutions regardless of the subject. So it's workforce development or academic development, curriculum revision, um, international linkage is all restricted by it. And so um, depending on uh, what specific subject we would be talking about, we believe that the subject of public policy should be touched and addressed in the, in the subject matter of its concern. Um, we would like to see multilateral um, presentations where you have government representatives and civil society and higher education institutions discussing the viability of these initiatives and projects as uh, favored or restricted by the public policy at hand. So uh, do not hesitate. This is not meant to be um, an internationalization only Congress, but rather to touch upon the viability of what we want to do and how do these diverse publics and actors facilitate or uh, promote what we need to do. Okay. Eh, Luis, también tuvimos una solicitud de explicar en español. Si Mariana puedes volver a poner el PowerPoint en español en la sección de participación. Esto precisamente, ¿no? De cómo eh, cómo pueden. ¿Cuál era Mariana? Era. Aquí estamos. Aquí estamos. Sí. 
Eh, de, de decía yo que, y Francis explicaba también, eh, tenemos dos, dos grandes maneras de poder participar en las actividades del calle eh, de este año. Una, previo al Congreso mismo, que será en octubre, a través de la serie de webinarios, siete en total a partir de marzo, eh, que están descritos en el sitio web. De los siete estaremos tocando cada uno de los seis subtemas que identificamos dentro del Congreso. El séptimo estará tocando sobre los aspectos de eh, evaluación de la calidad y uh, indicadores para la internacionalización del continente. Eh, y bueno, servirá entonces como eh, puentes para poder abrir las conversaciones, iniciar el diálogo, poder llegar ya con bagaje eh, de, de ideas antes del inicio propio del Congreso. Y luego se encuentra la posibilidad durante el Congreso de participar a través de las sesiones paralelas que este año estarán disponibles 30 y la fecha límite para poder presentarlas es el 7 de abril. Entonces, ya como explicábamos, la idea es poder tener paneles de, de presentadores diversos que puedan presentar ya sea casos comparativos o que puedan presentar las diferentes aristas o perspectivas de una misma problemática. Entonces, los invitamos a analizar la información. Eh, presentamos aquí, eh, por un lado tenemos la página en, en inglés, por otro lado... Eh, eh, queríamos hacer un poco de un gesto de amabilidad a nuestros, a nuestros colegas brasileños o, o luso falantes eh, tam, pusimos esa pantalla en, en, en portugués más el sitio obviamente existen los cuatro idiomas y de nuestra parte bueno estamos en la mejor disposición de responder también en cualquiera de ellos muy bien gracias Luis so the, the question was simply to clarify uh, some of the processes in Spanish for some who were um, so as as uh, other participants might add other requests. Uh, I just want to make a couple of remarks as well uh, before we close. Um, first, of course, if you are involved uh, in local, regional, sub-regional uh, conferences and similar events and where you think that Calle uh, puede, uh, could be promoted or, or, or discussed and you, you, you would like to request some materials or a quick PowerPoint or some a flyer, please let us know. We can assist uh, and attend those requests. Eh, si algunos de ustedes están activos eh, o van a participar en eventos eh, que sean nacionales o regionales donde opinan que hay un potencial de, de, de promover el CAI con, con una, un, un público pues identificado, pueden escribirnos para pedir un material de, apoyo, de, de promoción, un PowerPoint o lo que sea, estaríamos dispuestos a, a apoyarlos. Uh, also, uh, if uh, you are in touch with different sponsors, uh, we have in the past had different sponsors uh, coming from technology uh, field, those who are providing services, student recruitment. So if you are in touch with some that could get have an interest in, in terms of, of, of opening to the entire continent, uh, let us know. Uh, we, we are currently opening the, 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 the exhibition fair as well. Si algunos de ustedes eh, tienen ideas de sponsor o tienen colegas pues que, que trabajan en tem en herramientas de e-learning, de otras tecnologías o que de reclutamiento estudiantil y que quieren esta visibilidad continental, pueden pasarnos los contactos y, y les comunicaremos. Um, is there any other question for now? Uh, maybe, David, I, I, I would just answer uh, Miguel's question uh, from Ana, uh, answering if local students could be involved. Uh, of course, Anna, uh, we will be looking for volunteers, actually, to students that are interested in this field. Uh, we will be, uh, I'll keep your name and uh, we'll get in touch about that. Thank you. I'll forward the email, Francis. Um, si se publicaran memorias del evento, we will be, is there, will there going to be a publishment of the different conferences. So we are currently in discussion with uh, different firms who are in charge of that. Hay ahora algunas discusiones abiertas eh, con eh, empresas especializadas en la publicación de dichas memorias con código ISBN y todo. Y también nuestro comité nacional lo está eh, evaluando dentro de la estructura de las cinco universidades nacionales. Um, okay, 
Good. I think we're good with questions. Um, just an, another note, uh, already just in this first webinar, just to, to, to mention a couple of that, uh, for those of you who wonder if Kai is inter-American or not, uh, we have people from all the way in Canada, coast to coast, including Newfoundland in, in Cornerbrook, uh, all the way down to the Patagonia, in, well, Argentina at least, Santa Fe, Argentina, people in the Caribbean, we have Guyana, Jamaica, and of course, I mean, Bahia, Brazil, Mexico, Ecuador, Cuba, también en el Caribe, saludos por allá. And, and I want to say that those uh, who, who come from smaller countries, uh, we are active with your uh, national uh, institutions, sometimes with your governments. So if access to the conference is a challenge in terms of getting support for uh, your flight or accommodation, uh, you can also liaise with your authorities in order to try to get support. We have a couple of countries that are uh, identified as strategic. The Government of Canada also have interest in bringing in certain countries to the to the conference. So uh, please engage discussions with your authorities for that. Uh, si algunos de ustedes vienen de áreas donde eh, el, el traslado a Montreal para una conferencia esta puede ser eh, eh, más difícil. Eh, por favor, pues que sepan que tenemos vinculación con algunas autoridades que sean dentro de los ministerios o dentro de las asociaciones nacionales. Entonces, les eh, invitamos a establecer el diálogo con sus ministerios y otras entidades para realmente eh, promover eh, la, la, la participación. El gobierno de Canadá también tiene interés en tener ciertos países presentes en el, en el En, el, en la conferencia, entonces es algo que podemos ayudar. Y saludos también a los españoles, me había perdido eh, la, la, la referencia a Doris eh, allá. So, uh, if there are no other questions, um, I'd just like to thank my colleagues, Francis at UCAM, uh, representing the National Committee and the five universities. Merci uh, de ta participación. Luis, colleague, uh, on, on behalf of the academic coordination of the committee, thanks for your uh, inputs. And of course, Luis remains available to all of you uh, for further questions. And as he mentioned, the call for proposal is currently open. Uh, we we look to to uh, we, we look forward to receiving your uh, your applications. And as Francis said, oct even today is beautiful in Montreal. It's sunny. We're above zero, and it's February, so will be good in October, it will be warm, it will be orange, same as the colors uh, of this, actually, uh, it's a logo. So uh, it's a beautiful time to visit Montreal, and we hope to, to see you there. Eh, nada más para terminar, eh, diciéndoles que, pues, eh, un agradecimiento especial a los colegas, y les esperamos en Montreal en octubre, eh, esperamos sus, sus eh, propuestas de trabajos para que sean presentados eh, eh, en el Congreso porque es un espacio para ustedes, la verdad, y la riqueza de este Congreso pues solo es posible gracias a la, a la alta calidad eh, académica y la pertinencia de los trabajos que nos han sido sometidos en el pasado. Entonces, esperemos leerlos primero y luego verlos y les esperamos en Montreal. Muchísimas gracias a todos y hasta la próxima. Muchas gracias. Hasta luego.